Hello, my name is Burt Williams. I'm the head coach and athletic director at Georgia Military College. We're a junior college located in Milledgeville, Georgia. Today we're going to tell you a little bit about defending the option from the 3-5-3 defense. We're going to show you how we do it from our basic fronts, stunts, and blitzes and show you a few video clips so maybe you can take something home with you. Hope you enjoy. First thing uh, I think that we ask ourselves are why are teams you know, wanting to run the option against us, especially if it's not a major component of their offense. The one thing, and I think that we use on our offense as well, is we want to keep defenses on their heels. That's one of the reasons we take option to our game offensively. And we feel like that's one of the reasons that people try to expand on their option or even come in with a special game plan trying to run a little bit of option against us in that 3-5-3. Three, they want to try to get our defense off balance because we are an attacking, moving, on the snap of the ball, hitting gaps defense. They're trying to catch us basically in an unsound play where maybe we leave a gap open and they can get a, a big play or certainly a positive play against our defense. So you know, we feel that's one of the reasons that people are starting to do a little bit more option against us. It's really difficult also for an opposing team to practice to get ready for the option if you don't see it a whole lot. As a defense, uh, you go week to week and through your season, if you haven't played a lot of option teams and you're getting ready to play a team that uh, majors in the option, it's very difficult in the three or four days you have to uh, put a game plan in and get ready to execute it to uh, be able to handle the option plus the rest of that opponent's defense. On top of that, it's also we found very hard to get good enough personnel to imitate your opponent's option attack uh, for your scout team. So that makes it not only is it tough time-wise, it's tough being able for your defense to uh, get a good look. And uh, that's another reason we feel like some of the people are trying to go to more option, maybe trying to surprise us to see if they can catch us off guard a little bit when we get ready to play them. One thing uh, that we talk to our uh, defense about when we get ready to go into a game where we're anticipating defending the option and we cover that eventuality as we go through the week. You know, there's certain things you have to do and the, the very first and foremost thing is you have to make absolutely sure that everybody on the defense is carrying out their assignment, that they're hitting the right gap. It becomes especially important against the option. Uh, especially the triple option to make sure everybody is hitting exactly where they're supposed to be, adjusting exactly the way they need to. And with the pressure packages we bring to the field and the movement again, it's very, very important for us to be able to do that. Again, we run into the problems we talked about just a second ago. You only have so much time during the week to cover the different fronts, the different things you might see that an offense has shown in weeks previously. And also, you've got a little bit of the confusion factor as you uh, start trying to defend things you don't see very often. So it's very important, again, and something that we start from day one and hammer it all the way through, is talking to each and every member of our defense that's going to be on the field to make sure you carry out your assignment, that you hit your gap, that you slant to your gap, whatever it is we're asking to do when it's called, do it on time and be in the right place so we can make sure we play good, strong, well executed assignment football because we really believe that that is the the only way you're going to be able to stop that option consistently. Once we get past the time where we talk with our guys about making sure they carry out their assignment, as a staff when we get in and get ready to game plan, we want to try to put ourselves in plays and stunts and blitzes. They're going to still give us the opportunity to get two defenders to each responsibility on stopping the option. And we kind of worst case scenario that with the triple option if we see a team that's shown some of that before. And of course we get a little bit more practice maybe than some do because our offense runs some of the triple option as well on the read. So that helps our defense out because we're able to practice that at least a little bit all year. 
But again, the thing we want to try to do is have two defenders having responsibility for the dive, two defenders having responsibility for the quarterback, two defenders having responsibility for the pitch man. And we really take a lot of time when we construct the stunts and blitzes to make sure we're getting adequate personnel or leaving adequate personnel in place to stop those three components of the triple option. The other thing, again, as a staff, we want to make sure we teach our guys that they fully understand their assignments and we don't put too much in going into a game where options going to be a big part of it. Because without that understanding, without them hitting the gaps, executing the plays as we call them in, we're not going to be able to be successful. So we got to be smart on our part as coaches not to put too much out there if we're going to see a lot of option, but to carefully craft those blitzes and stunts that we think we need to be able to stop what an opposing team is going to do against our defense. One of the toughest things involved in getting our guys ready for the option as well is having them make sure they carry out their assignment on the option before running to the football. It's running to the football is one thing our defense really prides itself on. I think when you see the, the clips of our defense playing, you'll see most of the time we've got eight, nine guys at least around the ball on every play. That's something we stress every day. We do pursuit every day. We really stress to everyone, get to the ball. We make our guys get around the ball at the end of every play when we're in practice. But that's something we stress, stress, stress. When you're running against the option, though, sometimes those guys are so intent on running to the ball, sometimes they don't carry out that assignment fully. They might hit that fullback, but they don't wrap him up to make sure he doesn't have the ball before taking him down and then running to the football. So we want to make sure they still understand that they have to carry out their assignments on the field before they do that all-important uh, aspect of our defense, which is running to the football on every play. As we've talked about uh, a little bit earlier and uh, on our other videos, we are a, an attacking, aggressive, downhill defense. We're not standing still very often. And because of that, people uh, try to get us in a bad uh, situation, obviously, try to check at the line, do some speed option away from where we appear to be bringing pressure and things of that nature. However, we found that our attacking blitzing style is, has given us as much of an advantage maybe as our opponents think it's given us a disadvantage. Uh, the speed we're able to put on the field in that 3-5-3 three, three gives us such a, a better chance to stop that option we feel, and I think the history to this point has proven our point. But that speed out there really gives us a chance to have great support for our responsibility people inside out and that safety coming downhill to be able to stop the option when we get it to. So we really feel that our style of play has been uh, helpful in stopping the option when we get to it. The other thing as we talk when we bring our 3-5-3 into the game, it's gap control all the way across. Gap control at every position, not just those guys stopping the option, but everybody backside on it. Everybody hitting the outside gaps exactly where they need to be. Those weeks we go into play an option team, we've got to be excellent at controlling our areas and hitting our responsibilities and that's very important in the 353 in any defense for that matter the other thing we have to do in junior college that makes it a little bit tougher maybe than a four-year school we don't have a lot of time with our young men while they're here with us we've talked about the difficulty in preparing and on a week's notice for an option team you know as as a defense well it's tougher in that you you're never preparing a young student athlete to get out there on the field that you've had for more than a year. Yeah, all our second year players are finishing up, graduating and moving on. So not only do we have a short week to teach these guys to defend the option, you don't have a build up and experience really in their background that you can build upon. So we really have to make sure we get our guys uh, to understand what we're trying to get to, understand we don't put too much on our guys in this 3-5-3, three, three, but give them something that they can know, they can understand, that they don't question, and that they can attack without any problems of confusion and lack of understanding. When they can attack, when they can go full speed, execute all aspects of the defense, we find that great things are going to happen. When those guys on defense are thinking too much rather than reading, reacting, and, and getting to where they're going, then we come into some problems. So we want to make sure as a staff, we put our guys in the best possible situation to where they can be going full speed downhill to their responsibilities and making plays. And unfortunately, we've been able to do that and have had a lot of success with that over the years. 
As we look uh, defensively at trying to stop the option, we go through the same progression that essentially everybody else does going in. We've got to stop the fullback first, wherever he's going, whether it's dive, trap, you know, belly, you know, whatever type of scheme that's coming to you, you've got to be able to stop that fullback first. If you're not, you're going to have a long day. And that's the first thing we want to make sure. We are going to have two people that can be there to stop that, that fullback on every play. We make sure we're in position to do that. The second thing you have to do to be able to stop the option in the progression is to stop the quarterback. That's the next big piece. You stopped up the middle. He's made the pull or he's made the decision not to give it to the fullback and now he's getting on your edge. You've got to make sure you've got people there in position to either feather him out, push him laterally, or make that play, make him pitch the ball to make sure there are no more options left for him. And again, we want to try to get two guys on that quarterback as many times as we possibly can, at least having somebody backing up the, whoever has the primary responsibility for that quarterback. And then the third thing, uh, obviously the third part of the progression, is to make sure we shut down that pitch. Once the A has the ball in his hands, we want to be making contact with him as soon as possible, dropping him on his line of the scrimmage, and again, having some backup personnel heading that way in case that first guy doesn't uh, get him down the way we want him to. But we talk to our guys through that progression, making sure we stop the fullback, stop the quarterback, stop that pitch man to make sure we shut down that option totally. Because of the fact that we, have, we do not face a lot of teams that major in the option, but we do see a growing number of teams giving us varying looks from their different offenses, we decided we need to come up with a very simple, consistent manner in which to have our team prepared to stop the option going into any game we see. And we stay with those simple, consistent rules, regardless of whatever game we go into, whatever blitz, whatever stunt, whatever front we're in. Whichever personnel on our defense has responsibility for the A and B gap, they're responsible for the fullback. Wherever guys are moving to, blitzing to, stunting to, A and B gap players to the play have responsibility for the fullback. The Mike has inside out responsibility, always fullback to quarterback. He's a backup guy there for the fullback and he's also a backup guy inside out for the quarterback. Because of the stunning that we do and the blitzing that we do, our Mike ends up making a lot of plays when people try to run the option. Whichever defender has that C-get responsibility is going to be responsible for taking the quarterback. Again, you've got inside out help with your Mike Backer. But our bats are going to be the one to take uh, the C-gap unless we're on a stunt of some sort, in which case the ends may be our C-gap player. But those guys have to be responsible for stopping the quarterback. So whoever has C-gap, whoever has that gap has the quarterback. Now dogs are going to be our pitch players primarily. Going there, we do have calls where we can switch that up and put them on quarterback and, and get the bats going outside to get to the pitch and do some different things. But as a general rule, we're going to have the dogs on the pitch man, and we're going to have that free safety filling the alley inside out, going there to help and support him. And it really doesn't matter on the front. It doesn't matter on the, the offensive uh, set, like I said, the blitz or the stunt or any of those other things. If you've got those gaps, you have the responsibility if option comes your way, whether you're expecting option or not. Starting with our base front that we started building the defense on our Jacks front, looking at an option that's coming to us, you can see real easily that we've got personnel in place to handle responsibilities on either side of the ball. If they want to attack going to the weak side here, as we said, our A and B gap players are going to be responsible for the fullback. But we've got the mic right now is going to be able to get downhill right now on that fullback. And with the end in Jacks right here, this bat is also going to be stepping right down, he'll read to him and he'll take that fullback if we come through. So we've made, uh, we've done what we wanted to do and that we're going to have two people right there to make sure we stop that fullback. Now we've got coming to the quarterback next, that second part of the progression. We've got the end going to C-gap. He knows as a C-gap player that's his responsibility. So he's got to be able to defeat that block and make sure he takes care of the quarterback if he comes down the line with him with the ball. The dog's in perfect position right here to be able to take the pitch man as he comes. So he will be our pitch player coming right here. And again, you've got the free safety right now, filling the alley inside out, quarterback the pitch in case he gets through here. That's going weak side in jacks. We've got everybody where they need to be and handled. 
Now if we want to go, if they want to try to attack us front side on our jacks, again, we've got an A-gap player right here. Mike's going to go to flow action here. He's going to be stepping there anyway. Boom. He's going to be there to fill B to take care of that fullback. We've got A and, a and B gaps covered. We've got two guys in there. B's going to go inside out. If this guy pinches down like you might on a beer, he can sit here to fit if grass opens. So we can have an additional guy here if that fullback hits daylight to take it. And he's going to make sure grass is full before he goes inside out to assist. Again, our end right here, we're in jacks. He's working C gap. That makes him a quarterback player because he's in C gap. He's got to defeat the block and get his job done. And again, our dog right now should be deep as the, as the deepest hip right there, taking the pitch and making sure that he has that defended. And again, we have the free that'll fill the alley right here when he sees option action right here, going inside out. Quarterback, if he busts through, he's there for him working through him to pitch if the, if the ball goes to the pitch man. So in our base jacks front, we're in good shape. We've got everything covered and we've got people on the field that can run and put ourselves in good position to take over uh, if we see the option. Now we can go to the second uh, front or stunt actually um, that we talked about early. This is our open stunt. Again, our three down linemen are coming from a head up position and they're stunning to the open side with the call that the linebackers give them. And now we'll go through the same progression weak side and strong side that we did with Jacks previously. If we get option coming to our right, the offense is weak side right there. We've got our nose right there in A gap ready to take full back. We've got the mic stepping right down with him, filling right here to take care of it. We've got the bat right now, or excuse me, these two right here again, we've got two on that full back ready to take it. We've got the bat right here able to go inside out to help the end with the quarterback. The end again is a C-gap ball player. C-gap ball player. So he's got the quarterback. He can get support inside out from the bat who will make sure grass is filled right there. No gap for that fullback to come through. Then he'll work inside out to help that end on quarterback as needed. Again, the dog in perfect position to take that pitch right up there and we've got the free fill in the alley as we go down the weak side. Now if we come back to the strong side, we're slanting away. Some folk might feel like we're in a bad situation. Not at all. Actually, we're in a very good situation. We've got that full back handled right now with this end taking that inside gap. That middle backer is going to be right here. Going to be right here inside out. If he can't collapse and do it down, we've got a secondary level of support right here. He's going to be inside out grass full. He'll work there to help the bat, who is now the C-gap player with the end coming in on open. He'll be the quarterback taker right there. And we've got the dog once again, perfect alignment to take care of that pitch man with secondary help coming with the free safety coming through the alley. So regardless of which way we're slanting right there, we're in a great situation when we're in our open stunt and people try to bring option against us. Going through real quickly again, uh, after doing open, obviously close call, where we're going to stun our three defensive linemen to the close side now, coming from that head up position, taking gap to the close side call. Essentially, you have the same uh, situation we had with open, and that we've got all the people we need to stop the option on either side. We'll go through it quickly. Short side, ends your B gap player now. He's a fullback stopper. Mike's going to be inside out right there. A gap, he's a fullback stopper. If he's able to close it down, he can give some inside help support to this bat, who as your C-gap ball player now, is your quarterback stopper. So right now we've got two here, possible extra support inside out. B's coming, he knows quarterback's his responsibility. Dog's right there for pitch, free in the alley. We're in a great position. Coming back quickly to the strong side, we've got the nose moving into A-gap on the snap with the stunt there. As we see, Mike stepping with him. He's a filler inside. We've got the, the bat right here as secondary support for the quarterback with the end, who's our primary C-gap player right here. He's going to step. No grass to go through. Inside out help right there on that. Dog right there is going to stop you pitch. And again, your freeze coming right through the alley, inside out through the quarterback to the pitch. So. Again, 
we've got all the people in place necessary to stop the option, and we've got some amount of backup behind them to make sure that option gets stopped in its tracks. And as long as we're hitting the right gaps, the right place, we're going to find ourselves in good position. The next stunt we like when we're going to get a lot of, we know we're going to get some triple option. We ran this a good bit when we played uh, some teams that we knew were coming into the game with some triple option. Simply our pinch stunt. Let's make sure the fullback's taken care of right here, certainly going strong side. We got A and B gap taken care of. It's locked down. We're going to have inside out support right here from the mic in case anything pops outside. Bat right now on the snap. That guy coming in, he knows he's going to fit to C. He's got option coming. He's going to be there for the QB to be able to make a power right there. Dog, again, is coming to the pitch right there. Inside out support from the mic backer, as we said. Of course, you've also got some secondary support coming, or uh, some second level support coming from your bat. Freeze filling the alley inside out. Quarterback to pitch. Again, we're in real good shape here with this pinch stunt. Working back weak side, they've got essentially the same situation. Okay, your nose is working weak, so your mic's not going to be an inside out support guy. He's going to have to take that A gap right there, and we're probably going to need both these guys to make sure that B is stopped, or that fullback to stop right there is an option. Your bat, though, right there is going to hit outside. He's there to stop the quarterback in his tracks. Your dog is right there, again, going straight to the pitch, staying on that outside hip, not letting him get outside of him. Freeze, filling the alley. That dog, anything that dog can't get to, ought to be able to turn right back into that free right there, as long as he keeps that good outside position that we try to hammer him into taking. Right there, the pinch stunt is a, has been a real good stunt for us. And a lot of times, and, and we'll see this later when the blitz comes up, we'll work a little mic week with the pinch to hit both those A gaps and B gaps awful hard if they've been having any type of success with, uh, with that fullback hitting in there. But that's a good stunt and has been a good stunt for us when we see people in that triple option. Okay, this is our tango stunt. And uh, tango, again, is probably not something we'd call when we're expecting option coming in as far as a down and distance situation or field position, situ field position situation. But we still don't have a bad, uh, a bad setup for making sure that option gets stopped. You're going to be a little soft here, obviously, with that nose stepping and, and working the twist. But you've got that end crashing right down right there through that inside because he's working the pinch. Your mic's going to be fitting right behind him right here in A gap. So we should still be able to handle that fullback no problem. Okay, when he gets action to that A gap, your nose is going to be inside out support to that quarterback. Bat should be fitting right there as well as he reads that option coming to him that way. Dog is still on pitch. And we still have inside out right here from the free, working the alley, quarterback to pitch. So even though we're going to be a little bit soft right there at point of attack, we still should be in decent shape right there if we get option hitting us this way. Now, if they uh, try to hit us back to the uh, strong side, we're still in pretty decent shape right here as we come across. We've got the end crashing just like we did before. This mic step and he gets option away, he's going to again fit hard right there. So we ought to be able to handle that fullback without any problem. Right here, the bat knows we've got pinch. He's got to be the C gap player if option's to him. He's going to be a quarterback guy. The dog is going to again attack uh, that pitch key and make sure he's not in the equation. And we got inside elf here with this free safety in the alley. So again, we feel like uh, even though it's probably not what you'd call knowing it's coming, we don't put ourselves in a bad situation if we do have tango called and option comes at us out there in the form of the triple. Now we're going to look at how uh, we might have to handle the option if we have some of our blitzes. Um, have to try to stop it. We're going to start with some of our four-man pressures that uh, we showed you earlier and, all, and then move to some of the five-man pressure uh, defensive calls blitzes that we'll make and see how they stack up against the option coming at us as well. And right, here, right here we have our bob blitz. It's a bob with an open stunt right here. This would be a bob open call for us. As you can see, if we've got option coming right here, we're in about as good a situation as you'd want. As far as defending the triple, we've got a nose stunting to the A gap to be a fullback stopper. We've got the bat hitting that B gap to be a fullback stopper. So we've got that first part of the progression handled. Our second part, the quarterback, the end stepping right out there for him. He's in good position to make sure he's taken and he's going to get inside out support from this mic right here. 
who's going to step right here at him. So he'll be inside out and help for him. Your dog, again, is right there in position to take that pitch. And we've got our free filling the alley inside out for additional help. We feel like we're going to be in pretty good shape if they try to run option into this right here. Now coming back side, not quite as good as we have obviously running to the teeth of it right here, but still we're in good shape with what we need right here. We're going to get the B stopped right here because of Mike. He's going to take that step, read, read it downhill coming here, and he's going to fit back in. We've got A and B gap player right here ready to stop that, that fullback from coming in. Our bat right here is going to know right now with our open call. He's the C gap player. He sees it coming. He's going to attack it tight and make sure that quarterback either pitches the ball or he makes a tackle on him if he tries to keep it. Again, the dog's there to take the pitch man, and we've got that next level of support coming from the, from the free safety running the alley through here to make sure he's there to clean everything up that comes through. And that's how we'd handle it with our uh, bob stunt. One of the other ways in, in that we bring a four-man pressure is our buck blitz right here. And this would be buck with an open call with our, our down three slanting to the, uh, to the open side, taking that gap to the open side right there. Again right here, if we get option coming to our right side, the offense is weak side in the form of the triple, we're going to be stepping. Boom, right here, fitting. We got two guys here to stop the B. Obviously they got to defeat their block and be there to take care of it. We got the B that's going to step down right here behind that, that out stunning uh, end right there to make sure there's no grass to fill in between right here. And then he's going to be inside out helping the end on that quarterback. So we got two here again to be able to stop that quarterback and even a little bit of help if we need it on the fullback right there. Our dog is going to be in position right now on the pitch to be able to make sure he's not an option for that quarterback. And we've got the free again coming down into that alley to make sure we've got it handled if we see option coming back that way at us. Now if they flip back and they try to run it strong, again, we're in pretty good shape as far as being able to stop it right here. We got this N crashing into B gap, Mike stepping, he's in great position to fill that A right there. We feel like we've got the B stop cold right here with what we're asking these guys to do and, and putting them where they need to be right here. Our B is gonna be a quarterback taker. He sees it coming to him. He ought to be hitting that quarterback before he crosses the tackles the rear end. Um, as he gets down there, he's in position. He's coming on the blitz. The key he's got to do right here is make sure he doesn't get too far upfield right now. He needs to come flat and hard into the ball right here, not get upfield too much, or he will leave a crease right there. So we've got to make sure we coach him up on a buck that he didn't get too far upfield, that he stays at the right level coming down through here a little flatter and making sure he can take that quarterback. Now the dog's going to be coming to pitch, and you got free in the alley. So again, we're in a good shape if that triple comes to us. That option comes to us right here, stunting that buck right into it. Right here you can see our next four-man pressure, which is our bat blitz. Right now we've got bat close called. Our down three are stunting to our close side right here, and we're bringing that bat with them through the A gap right here with them. If we've got option coming here, feel like we've got that B stopped pretty cold right here with a good a good uh, stunt right here and a good blitz by this bat right here. B ought to be out of the equation. Right now what we're putting a burden a little bit on our middle backer and that he's got to be inside out to come help. Now what we would probably do with a bat call, we'd probably alert this dog right here or maybe even uh, we talked about the other way, bring a boom that'll bring something else with it if we're playing a team that would run a lot of weak side option. If we're expecting it, probably not something we call because if they get that sealed down, we don't have the best angle with this middle backer right here. But he's got to be on his horse. He's got to read. He's got to fit inside out knowing our gaps are handled. He's got to be a quarterback player right there. Dog's got to be a pitch player right there unless we make a switch call that would make him be a quarterback player. Free's got to be the alley. Still puts in a pretty decent situation to stop it if we execute and this Mike's got his head in the game and, and getting to where he needs to be. Now if we take it back the other way, we find ourselves in a pretty decent shape. We ought to have that, that B stop first part of that progression. Mike stepping in there, we've got two guys in A and B ready to stop that fullback on the give. We've got our bat that's going to be in position to be inside out, help on the quarterback. 
end should be the primary quarterback player as he's the primary C-gap player. He's going to step right there. No grass, everything stopped. He's going to be inside out to the quarterback. Dogs are pitch man. And we've got free again coming down the alley as we have to make sure we handle that. Again, we're in pretty good shape here with that bat closed, especially if we're expecting some option coming to the strong side. Okay, the next means of bringing four-man pressure we talked about is our Mike stunt. And Mike's a stunt that we call strong or weak. Both our ends are going to be hitting the C gap, so there'll be quarterback players when we have to stop the option. And our nose is going to go opposite where the uh, mic is called to. So right here we have drawn up here a mic strong blitz right here. So let's look at option going both ways. We're in pretty good shape again right here. Um, going strong side, let's look weak first right here. We've got an A gap player to stop the B. Mic's away right now, so it's, uh, if that nose doesn't do a good job of making sure he holds his ground right there and bubbling that up, we've got a chance right here if this bat doesn't have his head in the game, he's got to make sure he's inside out and fitting grass right there. This backside bat right here should be coming right there as he sees action away and he should also be there for secondary help on the B coming. He's inside out if there's no grass helping the quarterback in should be there to be a quarterback stopper. Dog's got to be there to be a pitch stopper and freeze running the alley as he has to be a quarterback to pitch alley filler right there. So we've got people that can get in position to make the play right here if we need to. One thing we like to do if we're going to play an option team is to bring the mic with a pinch call which really stops that fullback right there and I can draw that up real quick for you. Coming weak, bring Mike Strong with a pinch right there. And that puts us in good shape of making sure that fullback's handled. Puts your bat either way. It's gonna be there for a quarterback player however he goes, regardless of the side. Dogs your pitch player, regardless of the side. And you freeze your alley player. So again, if we're gonna bring that mic, uh, we're probably looking to, uh, to bring that pinch stunt with it to make sure we have the inside handled and that fullback, that first part of that option stop in progression, make sure we have that handled. The next type of four-man pressure that we're going to look at stopping the option is our dog blitz. Again, dog like the buck comes with an open or closed tag with it to tell which dog uh, to come. The dog behind the action or the dog behind the slant right here is going to be the one blitzing right here. We've got dog open as our call, and whatever coverage we want behind it. Let's look at right now how we're going to stop the option from here. If we get option weak right here, who's our, who's our first progression stoppers, our fullback stoppers? Well, right here, it's got to be your mic in your nose right here. We're fitting in here hard, ready to take that fullback if we're coming in there, making sure that's no option. We've got the B, the bat, excuse me, that's going to be an inside out. If he needs his help on the fullback, we want to make sure he's stopped no grass, he's going to be inside out help to the quarterback where he ends your quarterback stopper right there. You got dog to the pitch right here and you're free. Again, filling the alley right there. Coming back the other way, if we get option uh, to the offensive strong side or tight inside right there, this is where we get into uh, where we might have to make a call to change responsibilities right here when we're going into a game where we're anticipating option. Right now, we'll just work down a progression. First progression stopper right here. We got our mic and our end right there taking care of the A and the B gaps, making sure that fullback stopped. Now, you've got this dog that's coming up and he's going to be coming right up in here. If we've got a, a lot of option coming, we may decide to make a call to switch it up on the quarterback just to put somebody different in his face and bring this dog flat right here. If we make that call, he'll come flat if we get the option read to the quarterback and the bat's got to get inside out to get to pitch. He's going to be a little late, but with that dog coming hot and hard right there, that pitch is going to be awful early. He's still going to be a good ways from the line of scrimmage and it's going to give us time to catch up to get to where we need. Of course, we got free safety help coming from behind to uh, make sure we got everything mopped up. If we don't make that call to switch it out, Everything is uh, pretty standard like we've been showing before. He's coming on the blitz right there. He'll stay deep as the as outside hip. Make sure he stays outside that outside hip right there, taking care of the pitch. And this B now 
is going to be fitting C gap, making sure he's a quarterback stopper, and you got your free in the alley. So one of those two ways, again, that's a change up that we'll use just to try to give that quarterback somebody different in his face uh, to try to maybe get him to do something uh, that won't be real positive for his team. All right, here we're going to take a look at a couple of our five-man pressure blitzes uh, and stopping the option right here. Just drawn up smack weak, which is going to bring our middle backer and our weak side bat through the A and B gaps right here. Get our ends in the C gap and take that nose away from the blitz right here. Smack weak, I think it's pretty obvious to see this would be a great call if we've got weak side option coming right here. We're going to get great pressure up the inside to take care of that first progression in stopping the option, that fullback right there. We've got the end, now he's got to do a good job again of not getting too far upfield. He's got to make sure he's there in place to stop that quarterback. He should be able to handle that. Dog is going to be right there getting upfield again, taking care of that pitch real quick. And we've got that free filling the alley, making sure he's cleaning up inside out and getting to him right there. Now if we come back the other way, we're still in pretty good shape right here, even though we've got our backers blitzing weak. Our nose is coming strong, he's coming hard. We, our bat right here, knowing we've got blitz away, knowing he's going to be the helping guy here in B gap, he's going to feel that hard being a first progression stopper if we've got option coming here. So we're going to take care of the fullback with these two right here. Our end is going to be the quarterback player once again. He's going to have to make sure he does a good job defeating any kind of double down block he might have if it's a speed or lead option anything like that because our dog's going to be the pitch stopper and now we're fitting right there inside out on the alley so he's going to get a little help late from that free safety inside out and that dog's going to stop the pitch right there so we're going to be again in pretty good shape there with our smack weak stopping the option again with another one of our five man pressure defenses we've got our blast uh, blitz drawn up here we've got both our bats hitting those b gaps hard nose playing straight up right here on that blast or we can make a, a call on the field between the nose and the mic that'll make a left or right call just between those two where they can take gaps. Uh, Mike will tell the nose where he's going, nose will go opposite. Uh, but however we've got both those A gaps handled by these two, however we're going to handle it. Let's look at option going weak right here. However it works right here with these two, we've got A gap and B gap handled right here so we've got the B gap stopped right here. We've got right here our end again in situation. He's got to be in control a little bit so it's not to get too far upfield to give an alley for that quarterback to shoot down and uh, get the running hash number sideline on us. So he's got to do a good job staying tight, getting back in that quarterback's face right there. The dog's going to be up on the pitch. As we get there, we've got the free running the alley inside out. We also, depending on where we've got this nose moving, we may have some inside out right here from our uh, middle linebacker. So. We're in a good sound solid uh, position right here if we get that option coming at us uh, in the form of the triple option. Coming back here, we've got the same exact situation. One of these two, however the call goes, is going to be an A-gap to make sure we stop that first progression again, get that fullback stopped. Now we're going to get this in right here, again making sure he does a good job defeating the block, not getting driven off to at least feather that uh, feather that quarterback if he does get double teamed right here if you get some sort of speed or lead option on the outside dog's going to do his part in turning that uh taking care of that pitch key may get a little bit of help inside out right here and you're definitely going to get help right there from the alley with your free coming down if he reads it coming to the strong side so again we're in good shape and uh again these guys you know we've talked about earlier these guys aren't going to be standing there static and blitzing on the uh and blitzing on the snap. These guys are going to be up in the line here, moving around in here, coming from, from different places, timing up those blitzes to get in and try to create some confusion on that offensive side of the ball, make those offensive linemen think about where these guys are coming from. Uh, just kind of giving it to you right here from the base alignment so you know exactly where they're hitting. But as you'll see when we get to the clips, these guys are coming uh, from various directions. The thing we want to limit them to is making sure they come, wherever they come from, they know where they're going and they're in position to be able to get there when the ball is snapped. Our next uh, blitz bringing five-man pressures, our double buck pinch. 
and we've got our ends taking those B gaps hard, and we're going to bring our bugs. Could do it from depth, again, from the line, move them in and out, but we're going to bring them outside the ends, taking those C gaps. This is a great stunt, has been a great stunt for us, playing the option teams. We'll get option coming weak right here. We're going to get that fullback handled. Mike standing right here, ready to take anything in A gap, threatening. He's squeezing it down hard right there. We got that B stopped. We've got the bat on the line, ready to take the quarterback immediately. He knows he's got to come flat and hard because the dog's going to be out here ready to take that pitch. So he's got to be thinking quarterback all the way, getting that done. And we've got inside out help right now on the free, hitting the alley right there, quarterback to pitch, cleaning anything up that needs to be cleaned up. If we get it back coming strong here, again, same thing. We've got an A gap player here, a B gap player here, hitting it. We're in good shape. Making sure that B is stopped. We're going to get inside help, inside out help from our mic as we step there to give that B a little bit of help on the quarterback if we need it. Dogs on pitch, freeze in the alley. We're in a great situation right here with this stunt if we get option coming at us strong, whether it's a triple option, uh, speed option, lead option, whatever. We're in a especially good situation here. The last five-man pressure uh, blitz we're going to talk about, stop the option right here, is our double dog blitz. We've got a pinch stunting with it right here. Go in as double dog pinch, cover one, uh, bringing both these dogs right here. Again, we're in great shape for handling the option going either side. Right here, we've got the B stopped right here. We've got a B gap player taking him on the end, crashing down. Mike's going to be able to fit right there. We get all the help we need in here stopping that first progression. Right here, like we talked about on the single dog earlier, we've got the opportunity to either make a call to switch and make the dog the quarterback player and uh, make the bat the pitch player. Again, that's a call on the field, something maybe we tell them on the sideline as uh, we get ready to go out on the field the next time. Let's switch it up when we get a, when we get a dog or double dog. Let's put the bats on pitch. Dog, you put some, you're a new guy getting in that quarterback's face. Let's give him something different. But if we do it standard, He'll take pitch, he'll fit outside for quarterback. If we make the switch again, the dog will be the quarterback player and the bat will fit outside, getting alley support from his free back there. So we've got it handled right here going weak. Coming back strong side. Pretty much the same situation right here. We've got a good situation for stopping that first progression. Nose is coming to it, ends coming to it hard. We're going to have inside out help right here from the mic going full back to quarterback. Again, if we make that switch, dog's on quarterback. He's got inside help from Mike, or the bat's going to be on quarterback if we don't make the switch call. He also getting inside help, inside out help from Mike, and one of the others going to be able to fit outside with alley support coming behind them. So that double dogs is especially a good. Uh, a good front for us as well if we know we're going to get some triple options, some read option in there to uh, be able to handle that and, and put ourselves in a good situation to stop the, the opponent's offense. Let's look at uh, trying to shut down the odds from some of our different blitzes here. We're going to see double dog pinch. Cover one, both dogs coming from the outside right here. You can see the dog doing a good job to the option, making sure the pitch is taken care of. We don't have a, uh, a B threat as far as a read. It's a double. We got the lead. We got to defeat the block on him, which we do a good job back, keeping his outside arm free, exploding through, making the play. Mike should have made it in the backfield, though. Got to look at a double buck pinch now. Again, good job. Dog reads what's coming, goes up and takes the pitch out of play. Pinch right there, we're coming inside out with support right there at our linebacker. Great pursuit to the ball, taking care of it. We've got a bat closed right here, coming from backside. Great pursuit right there. And again, just getting a little bit of speed option right here. And take the quarterback, doesn't need to stop his feet, he needs to go ahead and drive right through him. Good job for the dog getting back down to the pitch. Now we're back to double dog here. Got both dogs on the line coming from the outside. See again, stopping the progression. 
taking care of the B. He's not an option right there. It's glummed up. We got the end on the quarterback. Pitch taken care of by the dog right there. Good job executing, stopping the progression of the option. Now we're going to get a double buck pinch right here. Again, same thing. We do a good job shutting down the B right here. We should see our bat linebacker right here hitting the quarterback, which he's getting to him. We had penetration by our defensive line. It cost him to pitch quick. And we should see our dog doing a great job getting to the pitch. Right now you're going to see our solid front against a triple option. Look right here. Great job taking the fullback right there from our B-gap player. Really explodes down. It's a nice job. Should have our end right here. Gets blocked. Gives up a little bit too easily there. He needs to get more pressure upfield and not get swept inside so much. But we're seeing a good job from our uh, Mike working inside out right there. And the dog coming back up to make sure we stop the quarterback in the pitch. See another cut right here of double buck. Cover one, bring them from the outside. Actually trying to do a little follow right here, it looks like, off this uh, option. Again, shutting down the progression. Fullback's done, quarterback's done, pitch man handled. Now we just have a close call here. Cover three behind it. Mike does a good job taking on the B responsibility right here like he's supposed to. We get upfield a little bit too much right here with our defensive lineman. You see him run just past it. We need to do a better job of that with him being a big gap player right there. See our bat and dog follow up nicely. They're where they need to be shutting down the progression. Going to have a blast cover one. Both our bats hitting those inside gaps right here. Stopping the B, making sure that first progression stopped, doing a nice job of it right there. Now we're going to have a buck open. We'll get a slant to the open side, bringing our bat from the closed side, slanting in there with them, moving right to it right there. Nose guard's a little bit slow getting off. He's pursuing better. Great job coming down here. There's the nose finishing up with great pursuit, running to the football right there. Okay, we've got our solid fronts again, and we're running solid smack. You can see both those guys coming. Both our mic and our bat are hitting A and B gaps respectively right here. Doing a good job making the play for a loss right there, hitting it quick, taking care of your responsibility. Now we've got a double dog here. You can see where we've made a switch call. The dog takes the quarterback rather than going to pitch. Bat gets hung up inside. That can get outside fast enough to get to the pitch man as fast as we'd like. But with free safety, does a good job filling down and getting out there and making the tackle. You got a double buck pinch right here. Good job hitting the gaps. Getting to the ball right there, making the play for a loss. We have a bat close one. Got to do a better job tackling right here. We got hats in the right holes. Everybody hitting it like we need to, just need to do a better job. Right there, not missing the pitch. Need to get better inside out support by our middle backer right there. We have a bat close, Bob running back close and bringing the other bat with him on the back side. Again, doing a good job stopping the progression. You can see he's pushing the option laterally, feathering it out right there, stopping each part of the progression of the option as it comes to us. I want to thank you for watching the video today. I hope some of the things we talked about uh, defending the option with the 353 defense will be helpful for you and your program. Certainly it's something that we've had some success with and we've been able to answer the questions that have been put to us at this point from teams running the option. Uh, it's a work in progress as with every program and hopefully we'll continue to get better and do well. Again, hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.